in tonight's People, Places, and Things, the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels. It is rising on the downtown skyline, and while the construction goes on, work on the art that will adorn the inside of the cathedral is also underway. One of the many components is a series of huge tapestries that will cover the walls. Painter John Nava was commissioned for the work, even though he'd never worked in textiles. Arts advocate Rayford Rogers brings us the story of Nava's vision for the tapestries and how they're being made. Hello, I'm Rayford Rogers. Today on Art Shift, we're visiting with Los Angeles artist John Nava, who's been commissioned to create an enormous series of tapestries for the new downtown cathedral. For John, it's the commission of a lifetime. The Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels will be the biggest in the United States, and the tapestries inside will be the largest collection in the world. Filmmaker David Talapic is recording the process step by step for an upcoming full-length documentary. I don't know of any other modern tapestry cycles uh, in a sacred building like this that are uh, this size. It's big. It's one of the biggest ones. The building is a big building. I think it's going to be the biggest church in North America. Uh, so it's, a, it's an immense building and these tapestries range, I'm doing groups of tapestries that range in size from uh, 18 feet to about 45 feet in height and they're hung like parallel banners going down the road, but they cover the entire wall on each side of the nave. So it's a lot of acreage of weaving. And, you know, over 130 figures. He described for us in a very clever way how he proposed to take these portraits and photograph them digitally, manipulate these images on his computer to store them on a disk to write a program so that a loom could actually weave these things. It was absolutely an incredible and fascinating interview process. And so we left that particular uh, room saying that uh, there's really none other than, than John really in order to carry this out. Well, the, the, the salient feature of his work is that he's self-taught, that he's one of the better draftsmen in the country. He draws like a prince. As a figurative painter, he just brings to the table uh, uh, an incredible amount of facility. John has been able to utilize all the techniques that have preceded him, from Van Eyck brothers to uh, present day so that one looks at his work and can see influences of Caravaggio, of Velasquez, Sargent, and uh, so it, it becomes very rich in terms of our history. Well, what's remarkable for me is that John, uh, without knowing anything about tapestry, came up with uh, all the knowledge that was necessary to achieve this, and that's testimony to his um, genius. These paintings uh, are sort of not about art in a funny way. I mean, these, these, these works, they have a function that uh, is real and, they, and, and they're taken very seriously. I mean, they, they're care, they care very much about how the saints look and, and what attributes they have in all this business because it's not just about being decorative. It has, a, it has an actual uh, reality that, uh, is, that, that signifies. So, all of a sudden you're doing something that has a, a, you know, a real meaning beyond just being elegant. But if you, can, if you have a feeling for that, there's a deep truth in it. And that's what you have to get. And, th and if you get that, I think, it can, uh, I think that's part of what gives it power and that's part of what makes it beautiful. Right. The way the, the, the designs are done is that everything is seen at eye level. So I get down the floor and I shoot the feet right at eye level. And then I shoot the, the, the figure from two different, like from about knee level and about elbow level. And then I shoot the head at eye level. So that everything lays out pretty flat to the wall. And this is the way Egyptian art was done. Everything was perfect silhouettes, like an architectural elevation. And part of the idea of this design is that it's to lay very flat on the wall. So I'm trying to uh, break the three-dimensionality of it a little bit. The demands of the weaving process require that I change the way I paint. So I have this very small, primitive, limited palette, and I have to put the paint on relatively crudely, and I have to do it fast. And these are all exactly the opposite of the way <laughs> I used to work. But what's fantastic is that I've been totally seduced by it. 
So that now I love working that way. I love that surface. I love that finish. I love that limited palette. I love the way uh, everything gets executed. So it's changed the way I work. When the, when the image has been indexed, and flattened. I literally send it electronically to Bruges, Belgium, and it's sent directly to a loom. It's exactly like sending a piece of work to your printer, except instead of a printer, it's a huge machine that generates a tapestry. When you think of tapestries as, as, a, as a form of art, what this uh, project has, has uh, wrought for not only the Catholic Church, but also the civic community here in the LA Basin is a wonderful gift of tapestries that will make this city very, very proud. So I wanted that aspect, the individual humanity and reality of these people, to be very present. See, because what you're really focusing on is that they are human beings. And that's the aspect of it that I was trying to emphasize. What we were seeing were, were prototypes, but how large will the actual tapestries be? Um, you have to understand that John's been working on these for over two years day and night, I mean, he eats and sleeps tapestries. In order to cover these gigantic interior walls of the cathedral, the size of football fields. I mean, it's, it's mind-boggling, it truly is, and very exciting. How will they be suspended? Uh, beats me. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow. That's the architect's problem. Yeah. But they're gonna go, what, 45 feet high? That, that, that high, and the architect is the Spanish architect Moneo. Architect of the cathedral. Of the cathedral, very highly regarded worldwide. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be exciting because you'll have Disney Hall going up mm -hmm. and the cathedral going up, two very significant buildings by world-class architects. Will they fight with each other? Uh, the styles, oh, are, yeah, the styles are very different. Uh, architects always Both. get along. <laughs> no, no, but the buildings. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They're totally different. So, yeah. I don't think so. I think they will be amazingly complementary and just both fascinating. I, I think it's going to be so exciting yeah. for downtown Los Angeles. The biggest church in North America. Rayford Rogers, thank you so much for bringing us that report. We hope to see you again. Thank you very much. That's it for tonight's program. For all of us here at Life and Times tonight, have a wonderful evening. <laughs>